All right, so here we are in Fusion 360, and I'm gonna try to recreate my own putter, and I'm gonna try to do something a little bit different rather than the traditional one. Mine's gonna be set up for a right-handed person because I'm right-handed, and I just wanna challenge myself a little bit more. So the inspiration that I'm using is for this putter. Don't know who it's manufactured by, nor do I care. I just think it looks pretty cool. And as I look at this, I see that it's kind of got this wall, and on the outer side of this wall, that it has the uh, flat piece here, so when you hit the golf ball, it will go. Now, I do notice that there's an angle here, which is called the loft, and uh, doing my research for golf clubs, uh, I noticed that there's a huge science behind these, and I think that's pretty cool from an engineering standpoint. And right here, this is a three degree loft, which we will be putting on at the very end of this. But I think this is actually a pretty cool looking golf club for a putter and there's a lot of engineering behind it so i'm really impressed with golf clubs at least the mechanics behind it still find the sport incredibly boring though so here we are in fusion and the first thing we're going to do i've sketched up some designs here i don't know if any of this is going to work but we're going to try it anyway we're going to start with a simple rectangle and our rectangle is going to have a width here of 12 millimeters and a length of 100 millimeters so we've got this little rectangle and we're going to extrude by 30 millimeters. And what we now have right here is this back wall and we'll clean it up as we go. So we got this back wall here. We're gonna go switch down to the side and we're gonna make that little platform right here, which is gonna be this guy. That that's probably at least gotta be 42 millimeters because that is the distance or the diameter of a golf ball. So we're going to try to go a little bit wider than that to compensate for the left and the right. So we're going to make a rectangle on this side. But this time when we make a rectangle, we're actually going to do it from a center out. And so we're going to create a rectangle, but we want to select the center. And let's see, let's add uh, eight on each side. So we are looking at 58 millimeters. We're going to do an extrusion here. We're going to make this six millimeters and we're going to make the width of this 58 millimeters. That way we have a, approximately eight millimeters on each side. All right, let's go ahead and do an extrusion of this. And this will have to be at least 42 millimeters because that's the width of the golf ball. Let's look at that from the top. All right, we got that piece there looking good. We are going to make another rectangle right here. And if we look at the image, we're going to notice that this is much higher. And when I look at my sketch here, I'm going to start right here. But when I start right here, this should be three millimeters to align it. We're going to go up a little bit more. We're going to go up to eight. We're going to do the same thing over here. 21 by eight. If once again, we look at our image here this one's even going to be wider so this one we calculated at 42 millimeters uh we're going to add 10 to this so this is going to be 52 that and that we're going to make 52 millimeters extrusion all right there we go looking not too bad not too bad let's look at our image again we need to make this top piece right here this piece right here is for the handle i'm going to be using that 3 8 dowel and with that, I know it has a diameter of 9.8 millimeters from previous projects. I do know that in golf, that there is something called the lie angle. And the lie angle is what is referred to as this piece right here when the, the rod gets inserted to the putter. So this right here, I might be able to make somewhat straight, but this lie angle is going to be 70 degrees. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but it's what I'm going with. So we're actually going to create a simple line right here. We're going to go in 10 millimeters. There we go. Now I put that line there because what I want to do is I'm going to make my rectangle now from this point on, and this rectangle will be 12 by 12. We want it to be a perfect square. So 12 millimeters by 12 millimeters. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to take this body, body one, and we're going to hide it. We're going to use this plane right here, and we're actually going to go up 30 millimeters. And I'm going to do a slight move of this piece right here. And the slight move, we're just going to click M to move. We're going to rotate it. We're going to rotate that by 25 degrees. Why not? 
And what I want, I want this piece, this corner to be lined up right there. So we're just going to slide it over. All right. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to switch to the bottom. So we're going to extrude this piece just to intersect right there. And I want to keep the bodies separate because if I need to go back and change anything, this will allow me to do it. And that's actually not looking too bad right now. We're going to go ahead and put the piece that attaches onto the dowel right here. And we want to go right to the center. And we are going to make this 16 millimeters. Then we will, we're going to hide body. We're going to extrude this by 20 millimeters. That way it fits in there. It's got enough room to hold nice and neat. So we've got those pieces like that. And now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to make my circle. This was this is 9.8 right here for the diameter of this. And I know this because of uh, past projects. We're actually going to extrude minus 20 millimeters to dig in there. And now we have that. Let's go ahead and clean this up. You can see right here, we've got some issues with that. And we wanna fix that. And the way we're gonna fix this is by coming right here. And we're gonna combine these two bodies now, bodies two and three. And the way we're actually gonna fix this is we're gonna fillet this, these, the corners here to match up like that. So this is a 1.5, 1.5. So there we are, we have the mount for the rod to go in, the dowel will be going there. All right, now, if we go back to the reference image here, you'll notice that these actually have a curvature that go upward. So what I think is the best way to do this is we're gonna create a simple spline. And it's going to be a fit spline. We're going to start right here. This is about two millimeters up. I'm going to go to here. And then we're going to go to there. Then I have to make a line from here to here. And another from here to there. So I've got this little edge piece right here. And I'm going to extrude that by 52 millimeters. Start there, come over two, over three, and whoever said slope wasn't something that we would ever use. Create those. I got my little shape there. 52 millimeters right there. And I'm going to loft this by 10 millimeters. That way, this by five millimeters. That way, it's got more of a curve let's do that to this side as well all right so now we have that we want to do the same thing to the bottom here we're going to make it at that same exact curve so let's go ahead and get our spline in there we're going to go up two, over two then over by three make our lines now I've got this piece and now I'm going to do a simple negative extrude all the way across that side and then I'll fill it this as well to five millimeters give it that nice smooth look
So we've got the basics of it so far. We're getting there, the basic form of it. If we look at this though, you're gonna notice that these are all rounded edges, which we will do, especially on the outsides here because ours is looking pretty square. I'm gonna go down to a 10 millimeter on that side. 10 on this side. Then we want to fill it the edges. Let's do a one millimeter. Look at our reference image again. And right here we have even more fillets right there. We're only gonna do these by 0.5. Now, let's look back at the reference image. We need to make this right here sloped on either end and a fillet. So I don't think we're really gonna worry about this piece too much right here. I do know we're actually gonna have to come back and do a slight angle right here. Uh, we'll do that at the very end after we get everything nice and cleaned up. So we need to make some angled edges here. We're gonna just gonna do simple lines. So we're gonna make a line, we're gonna start right here. But what we wanna start with is actually the degrees. We're gonna make it 115 degrees. We're going to extrude this. We're gonna cut this through because we don't want it anymore. We're gonna to come to the other side, do the same process. Now on this side, we're going the opposite way. We wanted it to go down by 25 degrees. If we start at 90, that will take us to 65. Getting close to wrapping this up here. We're gonna do some fillets on the edges here though. Do a two millimeter fit a fillet here. Fillet of two millimeters. Then we're gonna to come to the front of this whole thing here. So the final steps we have to do, we have to make that loft of three degrees and then we have to make the lines to line the ball up so when we have a putt, it can be seamless. First thing we're gonna do though, is we're gonna hide the body that actually is attached to the shaft. That way, if I need to go back and make changes to it, I still can. We're gonna begin by making a line on this plane and we're actually going to start at the top here because the loft is gonna go outward. And I don't care about the length of the line. I care about the degree. In this case, it has to be 87 degrees because we were at 90 and we had to subtract three degrees. Now we're gonna come over to this side, to the front, and we're gonna extrude it because we need to go out just a smidge so we can have the loft correct. We're gonna do 1.5 millimeters. And so now you'll see the line is cutting from the base all the way to the top. Let's go ahead and split the body. We now have a new body over here created. Let's remove it, don't need it. There we go, we have a nice loft, looking good. Let's go to the top and let's create those patterns so we can have the lines. So the best way to do this is with our rectangle tool. We're gonna to create a rectangle, go to the very center. We're gonna do 42 by two millimeters. Then we'll do a small negative extrude of one millimeter so it cuts in. We're gonna repeat that process, but this time we're gonna start at the edges here and we're gonna make a line for reference purposes of eight millimeters so it's exactly spaced out correctly with the diameter of the ball. Repeat the process here. And we now have the three lines, so when we go to align the ball from the front, we can do that. One final thing I just now remembered we have to do, we have to put the center circle at the top of this. So we're gonna do that. 
by coming up here and we're just simply going to make a circle that is seven millimeters in diameter and if we look at our reference image if you look at our reference image you'll actually notice it's two holes here so we're going to do that too we're going to make this four millimeters and then we'll just go slightly down into this by two millimeters to get that nice just to make it a little cleaner we're gonna do a little bit of a fillet on each of these at a 0.5 so it's a little bit more round. I wonder if we can just do the fillet here of 0.5 as well. Do a fillet on this at 0.5. And so there is our golf club. Let's see if it will actually work. Let's go ahead and 3D print this right now.